Wait. Good job. Yeah, you red, blue, red. We're Heath and Alyssa, and in this video series, we're RVing across Europe with our family. Good morning. Today we're gonna try to get out of campgrounds. We've been staying the last four or five nights here in the Italian slash French Riviera. And while the beach has been beautiful, a lot of the campgrounds we've been staying at are very, very small. So we're gonna try to get some more space today. Our very first night on the road, we stayed at what is called a France Passion Stop, which is effectively a program similar to Harvest Host in America, where you can camp at wineries and farms. And our first night was just incredible. We stayed just outside of Champagne, France. We showed up and we had champagne tastings. We talked with the owners. It was just an amazing stop. And so we're gonna try to get out of campgrounds today and find another one pretty much similar to the first one that we stayed in. But first, we gotta dump all the tanks. This morning I scoped out where the dump station is, so I'm gonna have to back up this hill and back in between a bunch of RVs to get over to the place where we can dump and fill up our tanks. It should be fun. Step one. Oh. <laughs> oh my back. We walked a lot yesterday. How's everybody doing in here? Good. I've never buckled in this car seat. So oh, I can, can do, you it. do it. One of the things I think about sometimes is how I used to think that certain elements of life or travel were stressful before hey, kids. Hey, yeah. Where's your donut? Where's your donut? Yeah. Uh, hey, let's get in the car seat and we'll find it when we get on the road, okay? Anyway, parts of travel I thought used to be stressful for kids, like trying to get out of a campsite before checkout. What a joke. <laughs> trying to get out of a campsite before this. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Peter. Yeah. Do you think it'd be possible for one of you guys to help me back up to the dump station here in a second? Okay. In retrospect, I should have done the other one first. Back there, Peter's gonna help me just like old times. <laughs> Fun fact Peter used to be a professional bus driver, so having him along for our big RV trips like this is kind of amazing. <laughs> we love their company too, but that's a nice perk. Maybe it's a bad idea what I'm about to do. We'll see. Oh, you're kidding. Peter said, are you kidding when I told him I was going to back up straight? <laughs> Next step, back up past everyone's RV while people watch me. People always seem to come out of the woodwork to watch whenever you're doing weird stuff in an RV. I have no idea why that is. Want to though? Small dog over here walking, going to try to avoid it. There's a lot of spectators if I hit anything right now. Everywhere we've camped in France, now in Italy, on this trip, getting to their dump station. It's always in a really weird place on like a hillside or like right now he's like in between five other RVs. Eli, shh, shh. it's okay buddy, we're good, we're good. I think I need to be good. Good, good, that's good. perfect, perfect. <laughs> that wasn't too bad. Blue gloves today. This is today's dump station. Got fresh water. Gray, I think, is just gonna go under the cracks <laughs> to the metal <laughs> because I have we have no gray hose. So that is how we're gonna do that today. Can't say that it's not an adventure in Europe just to find and get to your dump site. I've been to a lot of dump stations over the years. Never have I seen just a natural shower-like drainage for your gray to all go into the middle, but I guess it works. Look at this. That is so weird. It's so weird. I mean. Everything's dumped. One kid's asleep. One's watching a movie. Well, this has got a snack. Let's go. Onward. We're breaking our no toll road today just because we have a really long drive. 
You did so you did good. It. You did a good job. You did so good. We just pulled over at a French Air. These are located all along the interstate, or I guess that's not really interstate. What highway? It's just a toll road. Toll road, which we've been trying not to take, and we've been doing a really good job of. But it was a three-hour difference today to take the toll, so we decided to just bite the bullet and take them. But the benefit of taking the tolls is that you get to stop over at these French Airs. You don't have to exit, and they're basically like rest stops in the U.S except for about three or four times nicer. The last one we pulled over at had a Starbucks inside. This one has a McDonald's. We're gonna make lunch in here, but it also has a park, a dump station for the well, RV. I'm sorry, your definition of nice is a Starbucks. I never I okay, fair enough. They're really nice in the fact that they're like clean. They're very clean and nice, and like it has a park on it, electric charging. You can also camp at many of the airs as well. So there's designated areas for motorhomes and they're very motorhome friendly. But they're not nice because they have a McDonald's or a Starbucks. I don't know why that was my comparison. No, but they do have like good coffee, not just like That's what I meant. Gas station. That's what coffee. I meant. Okay. So there's also Wi Fi. We got there. We got there, babe. <laughs> You're right. One, two, three. Alyssa's heating up some lunch in the RV. Kids are getting some time to run around and out of their car seat, which is really nice. And I'm going to pull up the France Passion app and try to find us a place to stay tonight. Okay, they didn't answer. Bummer. That was one that has an apple picking. So we wanted to try, wanted to, try to do that one because we thought it would be fun. 16th century built on the hillside. Wines and organic olive oil. One problem is that uh, all of the reviews are in different languages. So basically to figure out if people had a good experience, I have to, or to figure out what people's experience is, I have to screenshot, go to Google Translate. This one sounds pretty good. Okay, 0 for 2. I'm gonna try the first one again, because at least it rang. Come on. Bonjour, uh, parlez-vous anglais? Yes. How are you? Fine, thank you. <laughs> I was, uh, I'm calling, I'm a member of the France Passion Program, and I was wondering if yeah. you had availability for a motorhome for tonight. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Uh, and I saw that arrival time was uh, between 4 and 7 p.m. Um, I was curious, we're traveling, my wife, and we have two babies, and <laughs> we're a little over an hour away. We're happy to come at the 4 o'clock time. I was wondering if it might be possible to come a little earlier. <laughs> Around, uh... 2 or 2.30, um, <laughs> but if that's inconvenient, we can totally wait. No, 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 it's okay for us. Um, you're the exception. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if you have two baby, I understand. Okay. It's okay for us. Oh, it sounds wonderful. Well, I'm looking forward to it. We will see you soon. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Au revoir. De rien. Au revoir. They answered and said yes. And they're gonna let us come a little bit early, which is really nice. I hate to pull out the baby card, but I don't know. Sometimes I feel like, why not? Otherwise, we'll just sit on the side of the road. I think Alyssa will be excited. She was really wanting to go to an orchard. Bonjour. Bonjour. We found a place for the night and they're gonna let us come early. It's the orchard. Yes. I had to call twice, she didn't answer. They had a bug infestation, so there's no apples to pick, but they have apple juice and wine. <laughs> Bummer. But she seemed really nice. You still wanna go? Yeah. Okay. I just know someone would like. Pick I know that would be fun. We'll pick them in Colorado, maybe. Okay, oh, under the, in the trees, go under the trees? Perfect, sounds great. And is the shop open or does it open later? 
Uh, yeah, so shopping for fun if you want. I don't know. Oh, I see you. <laughs> Hi. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we will park and uh, then come up and visit the shop in a little bit. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Yeah. Great views. Oh, there's popcorn up there. So the host said that we could just pull up under these large trees over here and park in the shade. Wow. This is amazing property. Okay, so this looks pretty flat. I think so. We just pull up and park right here. This looks perfect. Yeah, we have this giant shade tree and all this space. After the last few days, this is, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Eli, what are you doing? <laughs> What are you doing in here? Turn on the windshield wipers. Worried about a torrential downpour. <laughs> All right, get help from Eli. Wait, hold on. <laughs> Eli, this is command central. <laughs> toys, nothing but toys up here. Uh, this is like our own private forest. Then you look over there. Oh, there's people over there. And it's just orchard everywhere. I want to go check out what they've got in the shop. I know they'll have good stuff. Farms always do. This is exactly what I was hoping for tonight. The coast was incredible, but it was also pretty chaotic. So the fact that we have this amazing space to ourselves is pretty cool. I'm gonna go up and scope out the front and say hello to our host, maybe see what we can buy. The rule behind the France Passion Program is similar to that of Harvest Hosts in the States, which is whenever you stay on site, you patron the business. So if it's a winery, buy wine. We saw several farms on here that had different types of organic milk and other things from their cows. So whatever business you're able to stay at, you go up and you buy some of their stuff. And one of my favorite parts about stops like this is just getting to interact with the hosts of the property because typically they sign up for a program like this. One, obviously because they have a business to run and people come here and buy things, but two, because they enjoy interacting and meeting people. And so it's been a really great way to get to interact and meet different types of people as we've been traveling. Well, we're going into like a secret cafe. <laughs> um, so this is my ancestor. He created the property in 1840. And at the beginning it was only forest. So he created everything. The house, the roads, bean trees, everything. And grandpa and my father make the first uh, grapes and we make our wine since 14 years. So it's a business family since the uh, seventh generation between him and me. <laughs> <laughs> difficult. It's wonderful because I'm so lucky to have this opportunity, but it's also difficult because you work in a family, so sometimes it's quite bitter. <laughs> Explosive. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Ellie, what do you want to say? Can I say mercy? Different people have different things that makes travel a meaningful experience. And for me, getting to talk to people and hear why they enjoy doing what they do and hear about their family's history and just kind of get to experience it in a nice, relaxed setting for me is like peak travel moment. It makes me feel like I get to experience yeah, small piece of France today. When bought some apple juice for the kids. They told us they had no sugar, nothing else. They just bottle up the apple juice after they press it, after from growing right here on the property and make their juice. And now we're about to cook some dinner and just hang out with this incredible view. Where are we going? We've met a couple different people on this trip already whose family have started these farms many generations ago. And where you can look up at these trees and see, hey, my family planted these and had the foresight to know that they weren't gonna get to see them to their ultimate completion, but one day, generations later, somebody will. And it's meaningful. It makes me think about what we can do like that for our family one day. What kind of flowers did you get? Put them in your pocket. 
Put them in my pocket? Yeah. Everyone had a good dinner and it's just very peaceful out here tonight and I'm so grateful that this is where we get to sleep. Gorgeous. Apparently this wine comes with notes of, is it nodes or notes? Notes. This wine comes with notes of cork in it. I can already tell. Yes. Have you been going to the top with this? We've been popping champagne. That's true. I feel like what should happen is like this should rest on the side. That's exactly what's supposed to happen. But then there's this weird lip on the bottom. Like why is this lip there ruining our life? <laughs> Eli's like, I got it, I'll help you. I saw on like an episode of Modern Family, she like hit it on something and the cork popped out. I've seen uh, Tom try to do that when we were in Paris and it looks like something where I would try to do it and break a bottle and glass would go everywhere. Okay, that's, yeah, that's really accurate. Hey, hey. Woo! Woohoo! Oh, that smells so good. You smell any nodes? Is that weird that I like to smell that as soon as it comes out? <laughs> you want the pink cap? It's like the coffee mug, got dirt in it. Bottoms up, babe. Cheers. Uh, uh.